from Microbe TV. This is Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and you're listening to Q&A with A and V. And joining me tonight from New York, Amy Rosenfeld. Hi, Vincent. Hello, How are you today? Productive day. Excellent. It's always good to have a productive day. And how are you? You're well? Yeah, I'm busy. I'm busy, busy, busy. Welcome everyone to your Wednesday evening dose of virology. <laughs> Not viruses, virology. Yes, and I, virology. Before, before we get started, I want to thank the moderators joining us tonight. Les, Vanity, Steph, and Frank. I think that's our lineup for this evening. Where's Tom? Tom said he'll be away the next few evenings. Ah. And uh, I just want everyone to know, next week I'm traveling to Omaha, which is in Nebraska, which is in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. And uh, as a consequence, I will not be able to live stream on Wednesday evening. So we will not live stream uh, next week. And Amy assures me that all of you will immediately forget it and not, never return again. <laughs> is that correct? I don't think I said that, but maybe I did. Oh, actually, Hopefully. you said if you missed two in a row, that's what would happen, yeah. Two in a row? Yeah, probably. But we're not. We're just missing one because I will be on the airplane. At, well, at you could stream. I'm sure not, I'm sure Vanity can teach you how to do it. No, no, no. It's a different to be the host streaming compared with it'll be a mess if I tried to stream, stream from the plane. Anyway, Plus, you're not going direct, right? You no, get on the plane Chicago. and you go to Chicago. Yeah, you know, and the, I, I hate that Chicago connection. It's always got to run from one terminal to the other. Ay, ay, ay. It's a big airport. A nice, no, it's a nice city, but I hope I make it. Anyway, I'm going to get into Newark at midnight. That sucks. Just like the cells in immune that don't do their job. It sucks. <laughs> so how are you going to get home? I'm going to park at the airport. And I'll take long term the bus. parking. Yeah, they, the long term parking is fine. You get on a bus and they bring you to your car. Yeah. Oh, Are why you, can't you take the air train? I took the air train. Well, no, air train doesn't go to long, long, long term parking. It goes to intermediate term. So long, long, long term parking. <laughs> what is that in Missouri? It's lot G. It's lot G. <laughs> it's the farthest lot from the airport. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's, it's right behind the runway. The planes land over the parking lot, and you only can get there by bus. And it's the cheapest. It's like fourteen dollars a day, as opposed to twenty five, which you get closer. You you want me to pay twenty five and get closer? No, I just like to tease you because you said long, long, long distance away. So I'm thinking it's back in Missouri. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll just charge it to Nebraska because I understand they have a lot of money there. Right? No, I'm just okay. kidding. I know they don't have a lot of money. I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, do you have any news for us tonight, or do you still need to wait a bit more? I'm busy. I need to... I'm busy. I don't have any news. Okay. There is no news. When there is news, we shall discuss, but there is no news. Here, as Mick Pepper says, it occurs to me perhaps Amy got the letter she's been waiting for. We will see. No, not yet. She didn't. They were, you'll, you'll, you'll understand it all once she tells you. <laughs> okay. There's a lot. Yeah. It's, yeah. No news. Okay. No news. It, no news is good news. But she's waiting for the letter. So that's good. Right? Yes. I'm waiting for the letter. Okay. But my bald spots are getting bigger. Animal Party wants to know what is this happening. This is Jen. I for, I have to write to Jen. I've been meaning to write to Jen. She emailed me and I've been bad and I acknowledge I haven't responded, but I will. What's happening with five-year-olds after June 1st, approval. Come back after June. Okay. So Carlos wants to know if you've seen this, SARS-CoV-2 vaccination and myocarditis in a Nordic cohort study of 23 million residents, they stake risk should be balanced against the benefits of protecting 
a severe COVID-19 disease. I thought the evidence was clear that vaccine risk is low even for those in 16 to 20. Yes, it is, right? Yeah, for sure. Much lower than risk of myocarditis from COVID. So there's really yeah, no... There's no need to balance. It's quite clear. <laughs> what, I think, what does Daniel say? It's like one in 500 for COVID and one in like 30 to 50,000. Yes. And, it and depends, the damage. It's also men, and, it's, it's males and it's a certain age, right? Right. But also uh, the inflammation is like a two-day event. Whereas the in, the damage from the infection is like your entire life. That's right. Yes, myocarditis uh, is treatable. After the, the myocarditis associated with vaccination is eminently treatable. I didn't think it needed treatment. I thought it was self-resolving yeah, after yeah, like. Could be. But few Daniel days. always says it can be treated easily if you oh, need to. I missed that part. Um, okay, so Frank J H wants to know why isn't there a vaccine for norovirus? I've had it a few times in my life, and I'm terrified of catching it again. You mean you don't like vomiting and having diarrhea for three days? <laughs> uh, we can ask Gabri Gabriel Parra. Um, he's working on the anagenic grouping of noroviruses. Okay. Um, I believe they are working on norovirus vaccines. Um, they're, they're in some kind of trial. Let's look it up. Va norovirus vaccine. The best way to answer a question is to... Uh, no vaccine exists. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> we know there is uh, no norovirus vaccine. The clinical studies will be completed this study, this summer. So it must be phase one. So what it is is a recombinant uh, vaccine, by the way, which is they produce the capsid protein VP1 in cells and it forms empty capsids. So this well, there's only one capsid protein. Yeah. So this study will be out July 2022, uh, JH. So when it is out, we can discuss it here. It's fine. Don't worry that it's a non-COVID question. Amy and I are toying with changing the focus of this, you know, so it's it's not supposed to be just COVID, although we say on the live stream announcement, right? What do we say here? Oh, uh, where is it? Yeah, see, answering your COVID-19 questions, right? But in Apparently reality, so. we'll take them all. We'll take them all. Uh, well, virology I'm questions. I'm I, more I don't interested have, in the non-COVID questions. I don't take questions about trafe. Trafe. That's non-kosher. <laughs> Someone it's said pork. that they were laughing at my pronunciation. Yeah, I, I know. So did Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, we're today's not May laughing 4th. at you. We're laughing with you. Today's May 4th. And the first is person to note that is... Is that the force that be is, with you day? May, yeah, may the fourth be with you. Amy, may the fourth be with you. You know, I I will acknowledge I've never seen a Star Wars movie, ever. None of the 10. I'm so sorry, but um, it's okay. You've seen other movies, I presume. Yes, but there's classics. Like, I've never seen The Godfather trilogy. I've never seen the Star Wars That's movies. Fine. What's your favorite movie? Charade. A charade is good. What's the other Terry one? And and Audrey Hepper. I thought Breakfast you like Breakfast at Tiffany. I do. Okay. Oh, so here's Jeff from Nebraska. I was an undergrad when you did the virology symposium in Lincoln. I got extra credit to attend. Ha. Huh. I was taking pre-reads. Oh, look at this. Now he's a year from his PhD. That's great. Uh, that's I remember that uh, I did a TWIV uh, at that symposium, I think. Yeah, I believe so. Didn't you do a twiv with a giant virus guy? Uh, Jim Van Etten was there, yeah. Yeah, the giant virus guy. And also Jack Morris, who was a plant virologist, was there, and uh, the head of the Virology Institute, yeah. I could have gotten a job there. Who? <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah, you could have. Does Amy? Does any human virus produce a virion which can carry host ID info, genetic, epigenetic, protein makeup, which could ID any specific characteristic of the host? Ah, so you want to ID the host by the virus that comes out of it? It's interesting. 
I don't know any baryon that uptakes that includes host DNA. Well, principal bacteriophages pick up bacterial DNA, right? Transduction, transducing bacteria. Yeah, but they don't, they don't pick up human DNA, to my no, knowledge. No, they don't infect human cells, but I am sure that human viruses can pick up bits of human DNA. But You need um, 100 nucleotides. For what? To ID a person. Yeah, 100 to nucleotides? To ID a person, you only That's need 100 nucleotides. Um, so, but doesn't it have to be from a specific place? No. So 100 bases anywhere in the genome can ID Amy from Vincent? Pretty much. Uh, why don't we do the test? Oh, we don't have we to. We could. Right? We could when we get a sequencer, sure. I think... Viruses do pick up information, but it's very rare. And so, you know, you're not going to be able to take a herpes virus and say it came from Amy or Vincent. No. Yeah, I don't think you can look at the protein composition of the lipid membrane that the cell, that no. the virus beds off of. No, but I mean, if, it, it included, if it included DNA, sure. Yeah, DNA would be the key to identifying, I think. The host that it came from. That's a very good question. It's quite thought provoking. Very mm -hmm. good. But I I think not. And then Barry continues: passage of a virus into different host or cells changes. Are we capable of predicting how it will change as it moves into a specific cell type or species? I don't believe so. Well, my crystal ball does not do that. No. And even when I hold the envelope to my head, it doesn't doesn't permit that. Really. I don't have I'm an sorry envelope. that your envelope is broken. I have a bunch of envelopes here, but I don't want to go get them. Well, I know what's in you, them. we don't. Uh, we don't have the right envelope. What's your opinion on what's going on in China? What's, I mean, do you know what's going on in China? Apparently, the citizens are not so happy with the severe lockdown. I think. Not that. You would ever hear that, right? I think I read it in the Times or the Journal. Maybe both. So I they're forget. still under very severe lockdown? Uh, I believe parts of China, yes. Why? Uh, I think they've had a few cases in that area and they don't want an outbreak. It's a bad policy. It's not working. Well, I agree it's a bad policy. I'm not in charge. I, well, but we it's really hard to know what goes on in other countries if you don't live there. Oh, you mean right? the news really isn't reliable, speckled. Amy? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of speculation. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, I don't like to speculate about other. I don't like to speculate about other countries, especially when their culture is so very different from ours, because then it makes it sound like I'm close-minded. Yeah. And, potentially bigoted and i'm not so i don't like to speculate um so ts if you're talking about conspiracies it's always going to be floating around forever but if you're talking about the lockdown my opinion is the lockdown is useless and we have vaccines that can prevent the necessity of lockdowns and they should just do that i don't know why they're doing it otherwise it's a bad decision, but many bad decisions have been made during this pandemic, not just by China, but by other countries. Ours included. Yeah. So, for example, now if you want to come back to the U.S. from overseas, you have to take a COVID test and be negative. Why didn't we start doing that in January 2020, folks? No, because we wouldn't admit there was a problem. Now we don't need it anymore, folks. And I have to do it when I come back from Switzerland. Well, I know somebody who was in, whose cousin was in Israel and had to do it and turned out to be positive and missed her brother's wedding. It's, 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 sorry, it's a dumb policy. It's totally unnecessary. Totally. Yes. Jesus. Animal Party loved you on the latest TWIV. Amy, she's a fan, Amy. You got it. I know. That. I love Jen. Jen is great. And her son's birthday is on the incubator soiree. He's going to be 11, and she's baking cakes. Yeah. She's 
she says she will miss So I'll miss you next week. Yeah. No live stream. Sorry. Um, Amy, is your job title principal investigator? On some grants you are, right? Yes, on some grants I am. So it's not a job. It's it's what you would put on a grant application. The job title would be in, a, in an academic institution, some kind of professor or research scientist. And in industry, it could be, I don't know. I, I don't know. What I don't the know because I, I don't work in industry. So I don't know. And I'm never going to you know, work. My in wife industry. was a senior research biochemist when she started and she became something else. I don't know. You could become eventually a vice president, blah, blah, blah. Well, my sisters are all vice presidents. Of oh, the where they work, they really? Work for. Yeah. I think they give out or vice presidents. Or maybe they're senior vice presidents. Yeah, senior vice presidents. So these are liberally doled out titles. I don't know. Amy's current worry. title is at Columbia University. She is an assistant professor, a research assistant professor, right? No, just research, just assistant professor. No, okay, research. assistant just professor. Assistant professor. And where she goes next, she'll let you know <laughs> what her title is. I don't actually know what her official title is. Do you? Don't worry, neither do I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. But so I Jeff's... know the academic, I know that that industry model is not correct. <laughs> um, Jeff says, you know what TWIV needs is a good plant virology episode. Yeah, I agree. It's been a while and COVID really threw the wrench in that. You know, before COVID, we did one now and then. But uh, we'll we'll get it back. I have, I have a, a satellite paper um yeah, on my on my radar to do i'm just trying to decide if we get a plant expert on or not but the guy at rutgers who uh we went to rutgers a while ago remember and we uh, did a, an episode and, and there were some plant virologists there i can always get him back on can always ask ann too have you ever heard of a flat bagel amy yes a I flagel have. is that trafe not real no it's not really a flagel. <laughs> Is that so, the right way to say it? Trafe? Yeah. Trafe. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Trafe. It's not really a flat bagel, but yes, I've heard of a flagel. I have flat okay. bagel. I had an, and, and the thing is, is it used to be, so when you had these really old fashioned uh, Jewish bakeries that were very Eastern European, they used to be like onion breads and bialis and various other things, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Frank says, what is the infected to symptom timeline for Omicron? Now, Dan is always saying how it's very short. It's like three days compared to seven days for previous variants. So it's a tough one, right? Because you get exposed. I don't exposed. like that answer. I'm sorry? I don't like Daniel's answer. Which one? That it's three days? Okay, I agree. But you know why? Because this is kind of anecdotal, observational stuff. And these docs write in all the time. And they say, you know, I see patients and it looks like it's three days now. I don't know how they figure that out. How do you know when they were exposed, right? Well, so not only problem? that, but you're not asking, they're not reporting the symptoms of the viral infection. They're reporting the symptoms of the immune response because they've all been primed with vaccines. So it's not really what the virus has done. You know what I'm saying, yeah, Jelly Bean? Gotcha. <laughs> I understand. I, I just am very suspicious of these. You know, remember the challenge study? We knew the, because that was using ancestral SARS CoV 2, we exactly knew the time to symptoms. Well, right. it doesn't matter what virus you used it. It was a very controlled environment. Yeah, I know. You knew when they got, you knew when you infected them and you knew when they reported symptoms. Uh, from Amy's hints, I infer her new job is either in Bethesda or Fort Detrick. It's neither. Neither. <laughs> and would I like to break the suspense? No, because there is no suspense. Well, there is. Your listeners love you and they would like to know. But, sh 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 you know, Amy wants to get the letter to make it official and not jinx herself, right? Right. 
Because you could imagine she announces it here and then somebody there hears and says, you know, this whippersnapper announced she had this job and she didn't yet, so we're not going to give it to her. And I would feel like crap if that happened, right? So I'm good with it. You would right. feel like crap? What about me? <laughs> yeah, of course you would feel like crap. I understand. I feel like crap? I might, you know, open the window. It not be so much fun. So... um Conrad says Norway is suggesting children do not get the vaccine since they are low risk. So here are my thoughts. I think that's a bad idea because children are at low risk, but they're not at zero risk. Over 700 children have died in the U.S. What if that one of those was your child? How would you feel if you decided not to get them vaccinated and then they died? I mean, to you, 700 is a number, but if one of those is your kid, then you feel like crap. So that's how I look at it. What about you, Amy? I think that's one way. That's part of the way I look at it. The other part of the way I look at it is we give we give kids vaccines against HPV and no five year old or 11 year old is really going to get H, you know, cervical cancer from HPV because it's a sexually mm -hmm. transmitted disease. And usually they're not sexually active when we first give the vaccine. We're giving it for that protection, you know. So I have no problem vaccinating, saying that we're giving it for the protection for, you know, as they age so that they don't get infected and develop severe disease, which is more severe as you age. It's like chicken pox, right? You get a few pox when you're like a year old and you get the virus get like thousands of chicken pox and some other side effects when you're like 20. Yeah, exactly right. Animal Party loved the, the new immune. Thank you. I did a paper and they were really nice about helping me out. That was a good, interesting paper, a subset of T cells, Amy, that are involved at uh, suppressing, not regular suppressor T cells, T regs, but a different subset that... Um, Seems to be involved in suppressing autoimmunity and also some infectious diseases. So quite interesting. Yeah, I saw. I haven't listened. I, I, I've been busy. But All I right. So, so Yuri uh, says she has a long question. It's in multiple parts. And so okay, she says well, basically, she says we have family coming to visit this summer. They're vaccinated and boosted, but they don't want a mask inside. Okay. And um, she has big health issues. I reacted badly to my first two jabs. I haven't recovered, so I can't get another booster. And so they're planning on having some HEPA filters uh, and the windows open a lot uh, and a filter in the room. I mean, I won't be around them unless outside. Does this seem reasonable? Is there anything else you would recommend? Well, I tell them not to visit if they don't want to wear a mask. I think it's kind of insensitive, right? <laughs> but that's yeah. just me. That's not a scientific answer. So the, the HEPA filter, windows open, and you wearing a mask is great. I think that's the best. Keep your distance. I think that. What do you think, Amy? I think it's a good idea. So here's the thing, Yuri. If you happen to get infected and you, you're symptomatic, go to your doctor and immediately get Paxlovid. Everyone in my family has done that in the last week, yeah. <laughs> Even David Ho got Paxlovid, right? Yep. So make sure that's the key to be ready because in some parts of the U.S. you have doctors who say, I don't use Paxlovid or I never heard of it, which is just, I don't understand what planet they're from. So get that lined up, okay, Yuri? Um, Christina says, you look so well. It's good okay. lighting. It's good lighting. It's good lighting. It's courtesy of Richard. Thank you, Richard. Amy will bring it with her at our new gig. All right, so Twin Daddy wants to know what level of protection do SARS survivors have from infection? Zero. Oh, survivors, Amy. Oh, SARS-1, you think? It says, what level of protection oh. SARS survivors have to SARS-CoV-2? And I don't think that there's a lot of cross. I think that we found that they could bind, but I don't think that Jesse Bloom or anybody showed that they were really neutralizing. And I don't think that Shane Crotty showed that they were neutralizing either. So 
I think you can bind, but I don't mm. think that they're particularly helpful in preventing yeah, dis infection or disease again, SARS-CoV-2. I, I didn't catch the SARS-1 there. Thank you very much, Amy. Yeah. So uh, I you, think, yeah. Amy looks happy. That's all we need. I love the suspense. So excited to know. Amy's yeah, paradox. There is news, but there is no news. That's Amy's paradox. Isn't that great? I like that. Too. It is. I like that. There is news, but there is no news. No, there is news and it is no news. <laughs> is well, it news. is news for you. It's good stuff. <laughs> I have exciting results, too. Want to talk about it? When we solve the structures later this okay. summer with, with Mike, we'll talk about it. Right, or so you Doug, can talk Doug about says, it. How many different proteases are typically required? The cleave proteins made during replication. Uh, some some viruses don't encode any proteases, right? Influenza virus doesn't encode any proteases. Coronaviruses encode. Wait, wait a minute. Two or three proteases. No flu proteases in the genome. Well, I guess norminidase is not really a. Protease. No, it's not a protease. It's yeah. a sialidase, right? Yeah, I know. I'm thinking. Yeah. I just like Picornis. to use these fancy words. <laughs> Sialidase. <laughs> um, picornaviruses have two or three proteases, right? Yes. And so you have 2A and 3C, although in some 2A is not a protease. 3C always is. And then you have the but leader But you have protease. LPRO. Yeah, the leader. And HIV has one protease. How many does coronaviruses have? Two. So there you go. I think two to three. I don't know viruses that have more. Do you? How many does herpes have? I don't know that herpes has or, any proteases. Let's or look giant for viruses. Or the big Mimi viruses. So, Amy, let me ask you a question. Yeah, there are herpes proteases. They're, they're maturational proteases, yeah. Um, and they are targets for chemotherapy, yeah. Interesting. So, Amy, do you think if you look at a protein sequence, could it be a protease and you would not recognize it because it wouldn't have a catalytic triad that you well, were aware yeah, of? Well, yeah, there are some catalytic triads that we're not aware of. So the giant viruses may encode proteases that we don't know about. I say typically one to three. Okay, uh, how long will the four vaccine series give immunity against severe disease and death? <laughs> That's funny, so you should ask that. Amy and I were discussing this today, right? Yes. And so there's a Lancet paper which says the third dose did really well against hospitalization and ER visits against Omicron, but after three months it fell. But those studies are based on people coming to emergency rooms, not being admitted for some respiratory disease. They happen to test positive for SARS-CoV-2, but you don't know if they go with COVID or for COVID. And so the confidence intervals on these numbers. So, for example, the hospital admission pr protection against Omicron was 85 percent at less than three months. 55% at three months or longer, but the confidence intervals, 28 to 71%. That's crappy data, right? Sounds that way. And also, the, the, the you just don't know if they went for COVID or something else, and that could make a big difference. So anyway, Ian, <laughs> uh, I don't know. If Omicron is the same and doesn't change, then it will last a long time. It won't last 40 years probably, right? It's not going to last polio length of time or measles length of time. But uh, certainly more than, than the current three to four months. I mean, you can't get a booster every four months. It doesn't make any sense. So I think these studies are flawed. Well, I think I'll, that they're always flawed because they're only based on antibodies. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think hospitalization and death is a good metric, but... Um, these are these are kind of convenience studies where they say, okay, let's take all the data of people who went to an ER and see if they were plus or minus COVID. And then they look at their vaccine status and they make some conclusions. And I just don't think that's correct. What's the protection against death? I mean, you know, you can imagine in a COVID era, people rush to the ER because they think they have COVID, but they don't. And that 
skews the numbers. Does that make sense, Amy? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I have family members who do that, yeah. Anyway, so I would say we don't know how long it's going to last, right? But it's not going to... I'd be really surprised if it lasted less than a year, which is what some people are saying. But how long will the four four vaccine series? Well, we're only on... The majority of people are only on three. Yeah. So where's this fourth? So, like, I'm not a big proponent of, you know, this idea that you need a fourth not clear that there is anything but like an extra three weeks of high antibody levels. And I don't know what that means to begin with. I think Offit, I think I, I think Offit talks about this in his editorial. All right. Me A says, I am not a hundred percent sure I need or want the booster. 65 had my primary series in April. Is booster really necessary? Had terrible sciatic pain with vaccine too. I presume me A is talking about the first booster, right, Amy? Yeah, shot number three. I think you ought to get it. It's the protection against uh, hospitalization. <laughs> now I'm, I'm using my the data I was criticizing. Actually, the protection against death is improved by the third dose, right, Amy? Isn't that correct? I would have just argued the breadth of antibodies uh, is greater, right? In the paper we did, didn't they say the third dose really helps the breath, right? Well, that's just a recapitulation of the Quebec paper. That's right. That's right. So I'm not going to give them credit for that discovery because it's the it's a recapitulation of the Quebec paper. So I me, mean, I would say get a get a booster. Oh, by the way, Amy, on the latest TWIP. In the very beginning, Dixon says to Daniel, Daniel, should I get a fourth vaccine dose? And Daniel what laughed. Daniel he, say? he said, why don't you go ask them on Q&A with A and V? <laughs> <laughs> and Dan Dixon said, well, I want to ask you. And then Daniel ignored him and said, should we do the case now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Dixon, do the case? Oh, you did the case first in the beginning of this week's twist? Well, we read the, uh, the letters, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Daniel said... All right, let's go to the case. And Dixon said, I'll pay you. I'll pay you for telehealth. <laughs> so it's okay. He didn't want to answer that. Isn't that funny? I, it, it, well, I think the thing is, is that Daniel doesn't really think that you need a fourth dose, but he doesn't want to be responsible because he likes Dixon and Dixon has some confounding problems, right? Yes. He does. So I think he doesn't want, it's like you should never treat your family member. So I think Daniel's uh, erring on that side, yeah. right? So John writes, some of the 2,600 that went to the White House dinner now have tested positive. Since they were boosted, should any of them have worried about testing if showing no symptoms? No. So in general, I don't think you should be tested if you don't have symptoms. However, there's some exceptions, right? Where you don't have choice over it. So to get back into the U.S. from overseas, you have to test negative. I think that's not needed, but I have to do it. In this case, maybe some of the members had family members who were under five or immunosuppressed or compromised, and so they, they thought that would be a good thing to test every, everyone, and if someone was positive, not to let them come. That's the only scenario I can, I can think. But the vice president, they gave Paxlovid, right, uh, Amy? <laughs> yes. And she didn't have symptoms, but. Well, at least they're not reporting that she had symptoms. I don't know if she did. Did you talk to her directly? Not, not in a million years would I ever talk to the VEEP. They would not deem themselves. I'm too low on the totem pole. It's okay. I'm I understand lower. the hierarchy. Frankly, I'm happy to talk to the 458 people tonight here and my science colleagues. That's all I need. And my family, of course. Although sometimes I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the world I live in. <laughs> but mostly I do. Sometimes, you, as you all know, it can be difficult. Family can be difficult. But um, no, no, I, my world, our world here is lovely, and I don't need the Veep. Uh, to, to, but I didn't even ask to talk to her. Okay, Morris, did you hear this study of wastewater from Israel says Delta is there. Pieces of Delta are there. We have no idea. I bet they're in animals. What do you think, Amy? I'm sure. Not in people. 
And so if they're just bits, just we don't know if there's infectious virus. Okay, that's the thing. So I don't know why they're saying it may cause a new wave. Um, Amy does because that's the immunity. justification for doing the study is that it's supposed to predict when people will ha when there will be a wave. So as the wastewater data increases, you're supposed to be on the lookout for outbreak. But you're also, you know, counting all the animals that get infected. Amy, is there re any research jobs in virology or molecular bio outside of academia? Yeah, you can go into industry. Yeah, you can go into industry. You can go into all kinds it's of, you can go small, yeah. big. You can go into government labs. There are a whole bunch of government labs, NIH, USDA, um, yeah. et cetera. So, yeah, there are plenty of jobs. It's nice to see Amy smiling. It's good. Can we see you smile? I smiled. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, what are your thoughts on no masks for travel? When do you feel we will officially be in the endemic phase? I still wear my mask out in public. So here's what I think. So I, I've stopped wearing masks on the train and subway. And then today I started again because I have to test negative to get back in the U.S., from Switzerland, and I don't want to get infected before then. Not that I'm afraid, not that I'm going to get sick, just be PCR positive. So I'm wearing a bloody mask just so I could get back in the U.S. So if you're in that kind of situation, wear a mask. So circulation levels right now of the virus are very low, right, Amy? All over the there U.S.? Is, uh, there's an uptick. Where? Everywhere, generally? Where the, where's this uptick? I mean, there's right? an uptick in the Northeast. It's not unsurprising because people no, are starting to travel No, I'm not saying it's surprising. I'm just saying that there is an uptick. Yeah. But I'm not surprised. You know, I, I just think in general, it, I feel that I'm sufficiently protected by vaccination. And if I get infected, if, you know, if I have some symptoms, I'll get Paxlovid or an antibody, monoclonal antibody. So, Why would you uh, need a monoclonal antibody? I want to feel those protein coursing through my veins. Oh, I'll give you something to course through your face. <laughs> Bouncing around in my <laughs> blood vessels. Bouncing around in my <laughs> blood vessels. Uh, that, 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 reminds me of, uh, that reminds me of a line from The Lord of the Rings, but I won't say it here. Um, yes? What? I think that we have to come to terms with that this is this may be the best that we got. So yes, I, think I agree. We need to move on. Yeah. I, I think that's the key. And Daniel is even beginning to say that this is the best we have right now. You're going to get the vaccines. You get three shots. That's it. And if you get a little sick, that's and, what we're stuck with. Well, you know, the virus isn't going away and there's always going to be new people. And so I think this is the best that you get and it's on par with flu and you just move on. You have to wrap around your brain around it. So we need to, like, move on. Um, what do you think about the RSV clinical trials? Do you know anything about those, Amy? Not really. No? Let's look them up. RSV clinical trial. I think it's Moderna. So here we have uh, invest respiratory syncytial virus, GSK. Uh, it's currently active, so they're still collecting data. This is efficacy in older adults over 60 years of age. 25,000 participants. Wow. Efficacy of a single dose and annual revaccination doses of this uh, pre-fusion investigational vaccine. That's interesting. I look forward to the results when they come out. I'm trying not to get involved. You can never tell when it may cross my desk or how. Can hepatitis C come back if you were cleared? Well, you can get it again, right? Uh, 
you can get infected, but I don't think you develop disease because I think that there's only one serotype. And I think it does have a neutralizing and T cell. I think that the T cell epitopes are pretty powerful. So yes, the, the so the the therapy, the the combination drugs, antivirals are very good at clearing infection, right? Yes, but like it's uh, like a th two or three month treatment. Yeah, but um, Marion, um, Koopmans, no, um starts with an M. She believes that you need to make a vaccine because the drugs are too expensive for third world countries and they get infected. So she needs to make a T cell based T cell epitope based vaccine. So um, I believe that uh, natural, I think that if you were to clear the infection and you gave and you looked at the uh, memory T cell response in, co in coordination with the B cells or antibodies. I think you're pretty well protected against the development of disease, but mm -hmm. not infection. Pat Marion Wilson. Martin. That's her Marion name. Marion Martin. Okay. Martin. Where, my, Pat wants to know, where would you catch norovirus? Well, water. <laughs> Don't you catch wa it from water, from contaminated what? food and water? Yeah, contaminated food. You can get it at on cruise ships, famously, at restaurants, catering places, uh, child like care places, a. Uh, wherever people congregate. And often there are people shedding who are not symptomatic and they can contaminate uh, the food. So when you go into a restaurant and you, you go to the bathroom, you see the sign there that says employees must wash their hands before returning to work. That's because of norovirus, because uh, if they're shedding, they need to wash their hands. Very that was well. also because of hep A. Uh, Maybe. That could be as well. Today, ABC News reported CDC forecasting increase in deaths. And deaths caused by COVID? I don't know. Do you know anything know. about that? I don't know. Take. Oh, I was wrong. There are six serotypes of hep C. So... I guess there's no cross reactivity. Right. So you can get reinfected and uh, then you need another course of therapy. And if you're a drug addict, yeah. you tend to be reinfected. I think, John, basically they're thinking that there's going to be a big wave again and there's going to be an uptick in deaths. Um, and also they think that these studies that we just talked about, the Lancet type studies, which they say, you know, the efficacy or effectiveness against. Uh, ER visits and hospitalization is declining. They think that's going to translate to more deaths, but I'm not sure that's correct. I'm not sure. All right, it's 845. I'll go to 9, and then I have to go. All right, and so Philip wants to know, what did you think about the Andromeda strain? I don't think you saw it, did you? No. I didn't see the movie. I read the book. I have it right here. Do you want to read it? Yeah, I'll read it. I read it in high school. I was thrilled, thrilled by it. I read other stuff in high school. Oh, this is a really good movie. The conversation with Gene Hackman. Gene was was great in that movie. Notice I I call him first name, but you know. Was it was it a science movie? I don't think it was a science movie. I think it was a spy movie, if I remember. I think you sat in a van and listened to the people, but I could be wrong. Let's look it up. Hackman. <laughs> We always have to look things up. Hackman, The Conversation. This is not virology, but mystery thriller. Yeah, Ford Coppola directed it. Yeah, a lot of uh, Italian actors. Harrison Ford was in it. Um, Amy, if you weren't a virologist, what would you be? That's easy for me. I'd be a virologist. What about you, no, Amy? So if you weren't able to be, if you weren't a virologist, what would you be? It's a joke. It's a joke. I know. I know. What are you looking at? I'm trying to see if I could pick out the Andromeda strain, but I couldn't. What would you be if you weren't a virologist? Uh, a pastry chef or a fashionista. Wow. That's different. What would you be? I don't want to be anything else. Well, you got to pick one there, buddy. Can I say that's podcaster? Can I say a podcaster? No, that's, that, that's bogus. 
because that's what I do now. Yeah, exactly. I'm the virologist podcaster. You'd be a photographer. I might. Or in this day, maybe a videographer. Yeah. But it doesn't You'd be appeal. be some kind as... of artist. I didn't say it was appealing as much as being a virologist. I just said that's what you would do. Yeah, Van Etten is going strong. I saw him two years ago at a meeting. Yeah, he's pretty pretty cool. Oh, George Beadle came from Nebraska. That's right. Great geneticist. Do you remember George Beadle? Yeah. Beadle and Tatum. I do remember. Ian says, uh, is Paxlovid in the elderly an aged care problem with the many medications? Is early remdes or bebtilovimab as effective and safe? No, it's not Daniel. as good. Daniel says the, that number one is Paxlovid. Remdesivir moved up <laughs> from the last. It moved up ahead of molnupiravir. Uh, so you you have to watch out with with Paxlovid because you're taking ritonavir with it. So you need to check on what other meds the patients are taking and whether there's a contraindication. Yeah. So, but the, you don't have to do that with remdesivir or bebtilovimab. Doesn't that just roll off the tongue, Amy? Bebtilovimab? I thought that bebtilovimab wasn't used anymore. I thought the only monoclonal was l, l Elushaver, Elushaver, Elushaver. Have you shelled? Whatever. No, Beb, yeah, Beb, is, was... uh, Beb is Daniel's number one pick. Really? Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I publish on uh, Microbe TV, uh, Daniel's weekly, another thing for me to do. It's called the no, Daniel it's Doctor. Hannah. Well, I've been doing it. So here it is. Let's put it up and show people. I should get Hannah to do it, shouldn't I? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's a good, such a good idea. Screen share. Okay, Daniel Griffin's COVID nineteen treatment summary. Passive vaccine. Evie Sheld. Yeah, that's so what I said. Evie Sheld is number one. Here's the EUA patients who have moderate to severe immune compromise. Blah blah blah. Um, okay, that's all Evie Sheld, and then. Um, Remdesivir, which is Vecluri, is the first approved treatment for children less than 12. That doesn't account for here. Paxlovid is next, see? Mm-hmm. Mild to moderate corona disease. That's it. And then Remdesivir, the order changed, which is now above monoclonal. Bebtilovimab is way down there. So you're right, Amy. Evusheld is first over Bebtilovimab. And then we have Molnupiravir, last option. Yeah. Anyway, so this document can be found on the show notes for, for Daniel's updates. You go down here to the links. You see Dr. Griffin's treatment guide. Boom. And I make I put that up. And usually I am a little slow at getting it up. Maybe not till Monday or Tuesday. Now you have Hannah. But uh, we have an intern, Hannah, who um, I should take take advantage of her being there and give her more stuff to do yeah yeah she's gonna be bored all summer if you don't give her stuff to do um can you click the likes folks 467 of you and uh got 200 likes so bring it up higher thanks appreciate it why has alan dove been making less frequent twiff he's got a a really uh irregular schedule he said he uh has to he's take being his a dad he used to take his daughter to tennis lessons every day. so But apparently this summer she's going to drive, so he'll get freed up this summer. And this summer, by the way, we're going to switch to TWIV once, uh, twice a week, Daniel's Thursday updates and once on Friday. We're going to get rid of this second episode because um, I don't think we need it anymore. Well, you want to make videos and do other things. So it's yeah, I do, want, I do want to do other things. I want to take advantage of the incubator and make some other content. Um, Good. 100 nucleotides, the idea person. What about a long repeat section or CAG repeat? I don't, I don't, I don't it's just 100 nucleotides. But, but you could be in an area that's highly repeated and maybe that wouldn't be enough, right? Uh, it might influence, I don't know. Um, okay. I just remember when I did some stuff for patients, 
uh, and when we fill out things, it's about 100 nucleotides. They don't ask about other details. Okay, let's try this one. I received my booster back in December at a chain pharmacy. They asked if I wanted a shingles shot too. I said, sure. <laughs> Why not? Questions. When should I get the second shot? Which well, I don't know what shot? the second shot is. What is he getting the second shot? Is of? there a shingles second shot? Yes. Yeah. When should you get it? I think it's, it's like six, six months later. Yeah, six months after the first dose. Oh, it, Marty remembers Johnny Carson. You got to have the hat in the mason jar. Did, they, did he pull the envelope out of a mason jar, Amy? Yes. Gosh, that's funny. I didn't remember you that. You know, I have mason jars at home. Yeah, I have them here too. What do you do with yours? Fell on my top fudge. I don't believe it. <laughs> you don't need to out fudge. No, I don't. Is your immune system's response to getting infected by flu, not in the flu vax, similar to how it responds to Omicron after getting COVID? All right. So if you get infected with influenza virus by a variant that's not in the flu vaccine, is that how you respond to Omicron after getting COVID? I think there's a difference in that with three doses. So you only get one dose of the flu vaccine and you get three now of covid vaccine and that allows the ancestral vaccine the older vaccine to neutralize induce antibodies that neutralize omicron so that's not the same as flu right what would you think that's correct amy yes david wants to know if there's a nutritional component to a robust immune system and if so what is it because i want it <laughs> I don't know. Um, there is a nutritional component, but we don't know. We don't know exactly what how to moderate it. I mean, yeah. you know, Linus Pauling always thought it was citric acid, right? Yeah. Well, vitamin, vitamin C, C, right? It's um, citric acid. Yeah, I'm just, I think you use the word vitamin C more people will understand, right? Yes, but um, there are things. I mean, you there are things that are thought to be good food, you know, good foods and there are bad foods and stuff. So, yeah, I don't think we understand what it is. There's also a, a, a rest component, right? Having good rest and not having stress yeah. in your life like Amy does, right? Yes. Your immune system isn't great, right? No. Questella is having problems with her refrigerator, but she's going to leave the stream on so that we get the credit. Thank you, Questella. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Is there any reason any more to inform guests from a large gathering that some people tested positive a couple of days after the event? Well, I don't think so. Unless you know that people have young kids and or, or older people, over 80 year old folks at home or immunocompromised people and you want to ensure that they're safe is that a good reason amy yeah oh look at we have a seven-year-old tonight maybe it's uh, adele that's cool i'm seven i wonder if i should still wear a mask at school if i don't have to how would you answer that amy uh if she's vaccinated, she probably doesn't need to. Yes. It's it, it. If you're vaccinated, you don't need to. What if she's not vaccinated? Should she wear a mask? Uh, probably because she doesn't want to get infected, but then she should go out immediately and get vaccinated. There's no reason why she isn't vaccinated. So I heard the um, new head of the FDA and he said that, you know, vaccines protect 90% and antivirals protect 90%. And he said that there's absolutely no reason to, in today's day and age that anybody should be dying of COVID. And I agree with that. 
Well, that's not correct because the vaccines are not 100% effective against Well, he didn't say that they were. He said that they were 90. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, so and he said that when you added, when you did that with 90% effectiveness of the antivirals in, in a general population, there should be no reason for anybody to die of COVID today. Yep. Okay. Okay. Here's one for Amy. Commentators on several media outlets say the common cold is caused by coronas. Is the common cold caused by several virus families, including rhino and others? Yes. So we have rhinoviruses, coronaviruses, adenoviruses, paramyxoviruses, boca viruses. What else? Metanumoviruses. Yeah. Yeah, many virus metanuma. families. Pa- uh, parainfluenza. Parainfluenza, thank you. Doreen says, I hope Amy stays where she is on Wednesday nights. We shall see. We hope she can. Well, we shall see. I know I need to get the shingles vaccine, but everyone I know has told me the worst vaccine they have gotten for side effects. I'm scared. I know shingles is worse. Yeah, it is. I know somebody who had shingles on their face and they went blind in one eye. Yeah, you're going to have pain at the injection site. You're going to have fever. You're going to feel crappy. Many people say take the day off after you get your shingles shot. I would think that that is better than spending... If you're 50, the next four years, blind out of one eye. But, hey, what do I know? It says here, Leo says, have Amy come on a live show at least once a month. Yeah, which, which we'll do our best. I hope, I'm hoping she can. Do you two get to work with electron microscopes? No, I don't no. anymore. Amy's collaborating with someone who does, right? Yes. And We're going to do a lot of cryo EM. Do you know, when I was a grad student, I worked with an EM. They actually let me put grids into the EM and, and view them. I was so scared because you had to pull a, be- a big vacuum, and I was always afraid I would blow it up. Yeah, my mom did that. Uh, any shoe reports tonight? You have the same purple shoes on? Tonight, right now? No, tonight I am wearing un. Uh, exciting, non-exciting A6 running shoes. Uh, but but I did whip out. Are you ready for this? Ready. I did whip out my red gingham Manolo Blahnik shoes. Red gingham? Red gingham. Are they Manolo flats? Manolo Blahniks. Are they flats? They're flats, yeah. What are you going to do with them? Put them on my feet. Are they very expensive? They're beautiful. Wait a minute. I have to look this up. Manolo, B-L-A-H-N-I-K. What is it? Red yeah, what? Red gingham. Flat Flats, should I put in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Red gingham flats. The number one hit is Bergdorf. Are they all sparkly? Yes. Oh, those are the sparkly spark- ones that you wore to ASV, right? Yeah, that a certain individual wanted to purchase. Remember that? Oh, look, I'm going to show everyone what this looks like. Uh, this they is were crazy. the one. This is crazy. Well, uh, nobody's seeing nothing but the front page of the live stream. Now. Sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> I shut off all the wrong things. Where's the producer when I need them? There it is. There's are my shoes. Did you really pay seventeen hundred bucks for them? No, 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 this no, is, no. This is an Australian no, no, website. No. That's the wrong website. That's beautiful. Those are I. Those are beautiful. They sparkle. There's. It's, yeah, don't you remember them? We were walking down this hill at, at College Park, and yeah. Wendy Murray asked me about the shoes. She was like, "Those are so beautiful. Where can I buy them?" And then I told her, and she was like, "Oh, remember that?" Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. No, I didn't pay. Those are beautiful shoes. I did not pay seventeen hundred dollars for that. What's the most you would ever pay for a pair of shoes? Uh I don't know, but I have to say that there were a pair of boots that were like that amount of money, and 
everybody was like, oh, you need to have them because they were fantastic. And I was like, I can't really do that. Very good. I'm like, I'm glad that you uh, showed really some restraint. So environmental says, I got both shots and the second shingles vaccine was awful, but I had shingles and that was way worse. Okay, so there you go. Get your second shot. Yeah, well, we can, it's nine o'clock, so two more and then I have to go. So, uh, yeah, I, I remember the Discord thing. I'm going to get going on that as soon as May is over. May is a tough month with a lot of stuff. So when May's over, I'll get on it. All right, six-year-old healthy niece, double vax. Pfizer had a bad case of COVID. We were all around her on Saturday. Was she less infectious because she was vaccinated? No other cases yet. Yeah, she was less yes. infectious. She's less infectious. She wasn't shedding virus for very long. Yeah, so hopefully nobody will get it, but you should know in a couple of days. Okay, don't let our curiosity stress you out. We are hopeful for you, and we look forward to good news when you're ready. See, they just want to know, Amy, because they love you. That's very nice. Uh, no, I haven't looked at the document. Pfizer dumps it, but I do have it on a list of things I need to do, and Amy has seen that list. Um, and as soon as May is over, I'll get to it. I'm sorry, May is really, really bad. <laughs> traveling and then we have some incubator spiels uh i feel yep. reassured knowing when i'm on an airplane i am traveling with others who have tested negative i have a family member who's too young for a vaccine has been hospitalized. so those are the cases where yes if there are other people okay. in the plane you you do it for them all right all right amy thank you so much for joining us this evening it was good all right we'll i'll see talk you in to two you weeks tomorrow. okay see you in two weeks i'll talk to you tomorrow yes thanks dear Oh, yeah, two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Plus, I well, next Wednesday, am I not recording P Puscast? Isn't that next Yeah, Wednesday? you're recording Puscast, but I'm not going to be there. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm recording Puscast. Yeah. That was my understanding. So you're recording Puscast, but, but you're not doing this. Unless you want to do this alone, I can show you how to do it. Let's just start off with Puscast and not okay. have the computer explode. <laughs> Let's okay. not push it here. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow now that I've Bye. been traumatized. <laughs> Look at the eyes. Bye-bye. Yeah, I've been traumatized. Okay, bye. <laughs> you could do it. She could do it. She could run the stream. All right. Uh, Leo, does the shingles vaccine use the same ad vector? No, it doesn't use an ad vector. The shingles vaccine is a protein. It's a purified protein mixed with an adjuvant. It's the it's a glycoprotein, the spike, or a spike. The shingles virus has multiple spike, different spike proteins. So this is one of the spike proteins produced in cells and purified. It's kind of like the Novavax vaccine, which we haven't seen yet, but it's a protein spike adjuvanted vaccine. So it's not not an ad vector. Nope. For the fully vaccinated people, does the risk for autoimmunity and more severe brain fog add up cumulatively each time you get newly infected? I don't see any evidence for that, no. I mean, we don't have so many rounds of uh, infections under our belt, but so far I have not seen any such indications. Clemens. And Mark is totally ending vaccine program mid-May. Many, many places are ending their vaccine requirements. Absolutely. <laughs> why, why is chicken pox more severe? Well, you, you actually mean chicken pox or shingles, right? Because shingles is a reactivation of chicken pox. But the, the aging thing is a senescence of your immune system, right? As you age you have uh, a reduced ability to deal with infections. Your immune system uh, gets less effective. And so this is one reason probably why shingles mainly occurs in people over 50, because then when your immune system is declining, it can happen in young people who are immunosuppressed for various reasons. Um, I hear the shingles vaccine is being tested on the mRNA platform. Would that make the immunological response less severe? Well, we don't know what is causing the response, right? It may be the adjuvant that's added to the vaccine. Although the same adjuvant is present in other vaccines, aluminum sulfate adjuvant. So I'm not sure it's that, but it may be the combination. 
may be the protein. I don't know. It's a good question. We'll see, right? And I suppose that, see, the, the good thing about Shingrix, the current shingles vaccine, is that it's very effective uh, at preventing shingles. So um, if, the, if an mRNA vaccine is not as effective, I don't think it will be adopted, right, as widely adopted. Um, so Topol, the cardiologist who should not be talking about infectious diseases, says there will be an increase in hospitalization and deaths, especially among age 50 and older because vaccines have not been changed. So he doesn't know what he's talking about, bar none, because the, there hasn't been any increase in deaths. He's making an assumption based. This Lancet study is stimulating all of this that I showed you. I showed you the preprint of it. I shared the screen, right? Did I? Well, I'll share it to you. Maybe I didn't share the screen. Maybe I'm dreaming. Oh, I must have. Basically, they did this flawed study which suggests that ER visits and hospitalizations are going up, but we don't know if that's COVID or something else or mix. So this is the kind of stuff Topol always says. He takes a result that's not quite kosher on its own, and he makes a statement like that. So here's the thing, folks. Let's talk about this a little. So you, you get a third dose of vaccine, an mRNA vaccine, say, and now you make antibodies that neutralize Omicron and you're protected against severe disease and death. Why in heaven's name would that go down in three months? It makes zero sense to me on an immunological basis unless memory is completely going away and I don't buy that at all. Don't buy it. Studies have shown memory lasts longer than that. Memory B cells and memory T cells. So this is a, certainly an observational issue, this idea that hospital visits and ER visits are going up because the vaccine is losing its ability to protect. I just do not get it. I don't know what the answer is, but it makes no sense. So you're saying that we're going to need a booster every three months? No way. This is a bloody virus, people. It doesn't jump start all the rules. No I don't have the answer, but for Topol to say this reflects that he really doesn't understand. But he does get a lot of Twitter followers by saying this crap. And you notice I get fewer because I say the opposite, which is you're going to be okay. Does Paxlovid help long COVID? Many people are asking that question, uh, and um, we don't know. We don't know the answer, but I'm sure studies are going to be done uh, and are being done at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you don't want a booster or can't get one, just make sure you have Evusheld or Paxlovid lined up. That's the key to doing it. Uh, you're welcome, Yuri. Yep, prepare with Paxlovid, you bet. Yes, uh, there is availability. They, Dr. Griffin gave out his phone number on one of the recent clinical updates so go find it if you can't find it in your area call him he'll help you should we have Paxlovid in our stash box well you can't <laughs> you can have it lined up have your physician ask your physician hey if I uh, get sick will you give me Paxlovid and if they say no I don't use it find another doc until you get one that will give it to you that's what because you can't really stash it right Okay. Oh, so you guys think it looks like a huge weight has been lifted from Amy's shoulders? Great. I'm glad you you like that. Um, well, she was under a lot of pressure, you know, to get a position. So it got, she got it. And uh, to say her, her hard work paid off and her results are fabulous and a very underappreciated scientist. All right, a question about Paxlovid. What about resistance? Uh, so I I don't think resistance is, in, is going to be an issue in any treated person unless they're infected with a resistant variant, and I haven't seen one yet. You know, these recrudescences after COVID, Paxlovid treatment doesn't seem to involve 
resistant viruses, it just seems that in, in many, in some people, five days of treatment is not enough. It's a short period of time, right? But it is an acute infection, so it should be enough, but maybe it's not. So um, I don't think, I, and I was at a meeting recently where someone said, you know, in a five-day acute infection, seven to 10-day acute infection, resistance is not going to be an issue unless there are widespread circulation of resistant variants, and we don't see that so far. Yeah. How often should we be getting a measles vaccine? Uh, you should only need it twice. You know, two two doses are now recommended. Many kids got just one. I just got one, um, but certainly no more than twice. The immunity from the vaccine is durable and long lasting for sure. Yeah. Tried to donate payment options grayed out. Yeah, I noticed nobody's uh, <laughs> donated. I don't know. Is the payment option? Let me see in my thing here. Let me go open a window. Uh, let's go to YouTube. Prof. Let's see if I can get a window open and see if uh, there's a donate button. Okay, look at that live. It's live. <laughs> the front page. Um Donate. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a donate button there, doesn't there? It's usually down there. Let's see. Dollar sign. I don't know. It's gone. Well, I'll have to look into it. Oh, Rob just donated some money, so it's working for some people. I don't know. Maybe somebody can look into it. Ah, and I know you can't because you're not running the stream, but I don't want to take time out. Okay, we got 293 likes, 500 listeners. Thank you very much. What do you think about the idea that reducing histamine intake using antihistamines would help post-COVID recovery? I'm not I don't see any trials to show that this is an effective recovery mode, but uh you know, I, I'm not sure that it's harmful. But I really don't know anything about it. Why don't bird influenza viruses jump to humans more often and cause symptomatic disease? That's a good question. It's good that they don't. Right? Because um, they can be lethal, but they are bird viruses viruses and they work well in birds but not in people and there are a number of molecular reasons for that but uh, it's i think the the switch is hard for them to do but it's not zero it happens right and that's typically when we have a pandemic influenza every 20 30 years uh, a virus has jumped over from uh, birds into people so the next one will most likely be something like that yeah the positivity rate is going up i understand that all over New York State, counties are getting higher. I wouldn't say as high as the big peak that we had already, but it's going up, yes. Because we're kids are getting out of school, people are starting to travel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, which airline are you flying to Switzerland? The only airline I fly, United. Not that I love it, um, but that all my miles are there and I get to get a good seat, okay? Just the United is a hub. Uh, Newark is a hub for United, so... I could have flown Swiss Air, right? They have a partnership program, but uh, the Swiss Air gets in at noon, I think, and the United gets in at 8 a.m. And I just felt, I just wanted to get there earlier. That's all. Uh, but I just don't like this idea that what if I test positive? What kind of a shit show would that be? I test positive, I can't, and have my incubator opening on Thursday, and I can't make it because of a bloody virus. How? Prophetic would that be? Um, yeah. We should ask Bill Gates what we should do? No. Bill Gates says so silly things now and then. I know he's got a lot of money and I shouldn't diss him, but my gosh. We're going to have more virulent and more transmissible variants, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't know what he's talking about. 
and you know what? Do you know what the reason is? He listens to other people and just repeats it blindly without thinking about it. So really people ask me, what does this mean? And I can tell you it's BS. But because all you need to do is think about it a little bit like the cardiologist. But he doesn't. He just repeats. All right. So a school in Enfield is closing because most of its staff is positive. So probably SARS-CoV-2 positive. They don't have any symptoms. Why are you going to close? I don't understand. This is the life we're going to have now forever. That's what we have with flu, okay? We don't close schools for influenza. But if you certainly tested people in a flu season, you'd see half the school was positive. So I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, I know testing is not difficult. Lori, testing, I'm not worried about getting tested. I'm just worried about being positive because I want to get, get home to do stuff because I always schedule things one after another. I don't put a week between coming back from Europe and doing something important, right? Eh. Well. If unvaccinated and infected in December, is vaccination still necessary? So here's the thing, uh, Joy. I would say yes, because you don't know what kind of immunity you got from your infection. You can have a robust immunity or a weak one, depending on how well the virus reproduced and so forth. Whereas with the vaccine, you always get the, the same amount. So I would, and the studies have shown that, so, you know, you got infected in December 2021, probably with Omicron, right? But if not, your, your immunity to Omicron isn't going to be great. So I would get... I would get two vaccine doses. Then you have really great immunity because right now we're not sure about your immunity. Hello, Rafael. Here in Brazil, masks are not mandatory. I am still using it indoors and in public. People that always advocated the use of masks even more than me are not using it. I don't get it. Well, I advocated masks very strongly, but I feel that with some exceptions, you don't need them. Because if you're going to mask now, you're going to mask next year. It's not going to be any different next year and the year after and the year after. So you could mask all the time. That's fine. But I choose not to. And I think the science tells me that I am protected. Now, I know there will be people saying, what about the old elderly? What about less than five-year-olds? So less than five-year-olds in June, hopefully we get vaccines for them. The immunocompromised and the elderly, that's an issue, right? For them... We say as soon as you get symptomatic, you get Paxlovid or Evusheld. So we can handle all these scenarios. And so there's no reason to die from this disease. And I think you can give people the choice to wear masks. If you choose to wear them this year, you're going to wear them next year and the year after. That's how I'm looking at it. And then so Sam says, aren't you concerned that more on masks leads to more transmission, which then leads to the likelihood of a new emergency? No, I'm not concerned at all. No. I, I, uh, new variants don't become more virulent. There's no selection for that as far as I can see. They may evade immunity, um, and but in the case of Omicron, the massive evasion of immunity was taken care of by a third vaccine dose. So I'm not concerned about that at all. No, there's, with most of the world, we get to the point where most of, the, of a country is either immune or vaccinated there will be much less transmission and circulation and reproduction. So the likelihood of any variants emerging decreases. So I'm not concerned about that now. How about an episode on healthy buildings and ventilation? I have to get an expert on for that, which can be done. You know, that's a job for my intern. Hey, go find an expert on building ventilation because, um, um, I'm not an expert. I'm not, I don't know who the experts are. Should I wait for Nova's approval for my fourth dose or should I stick with the Moderna? Um, I, I'm not sure. It depends if you're in any risk category. I, if not, don't. you can wait. There's no urgency to get it right now. But if you're elderly, if you have some comorbidity or immunosuppression, then you might want to get it. Thank you, OD, for your contribution. Pandemic 
has proven what academics have known, that process and progress aren't synonymous with the human variable. We appreciate the pods and all the things you do. One request some... Oh, there's John Campbell guy, so he shuts up. Yeah, John Campbell is a problem, but, you know, OD, and thank you for your generous contribution. Don't do a bomb threat. That's not good. good idea. It'll get you in trouble. Um, yeah, he's, he's gone off the, the – he's gone out of his lane. Um, uh, the thing is he, he doesn't think about what he's saying. He, he doesn't have the background to do it. But, you know, he gets a lot of um, attention uh, because he says what people like to hear. And my view is the more correct people are on YouTube, the less attention they get. And so, you know, we do really well for geeky science programs that are hard to understand, but – we should do better, and the reason is because we're not scaring people, and we're not saying what they want to hear. So the cardiologist and Campbell and others that get a lot of attention, I'm fine with that, because I stick to the to the facts. And anyway, we thank you, Od, very much. Appreciate it. It will go towards the incubator. Let's see here. <laughs> how much protection does one really have with two vaccines uh so the the, the effectiveness again hospitalization and emergency room visits that goes down but i don't buy those as metrics i want to see death and i think you're still protected against death although you know there's a lot of crappy COVID between mild and death, right? And you might not want that. So you might want to do the third dose just to prevent that. George Beetle bred corn back to its ancestor. I saw him working on it. Oh, I, I didn't know. Good for you. Oh, people are looking at talking about the Andromeda strain. Uh, Charlotte, that was your idea to put Daniel's list on every week. So I have you to thank for the <laughs> extra work. It's fine, but it's your idea. You say, say, great idea. It was your idea. You said, can you please put Daniel's recommendations on every week? So I did. There you go. It's up. Uh, you guys say jump. I say, how high do you want me to jump? And we have 500 people. That's pretty darn good, folks. I'm hoping Amy will continue to join us uh, at least once a month, if not every other week. But, you know, her new job may not permit it. We'll see. Is they're going to stop testing everyone on Broadway soon. Hmm. I mean, the, the, the Broadway crews, you know, I, it's a, that's, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Uh, some anti-maskers are trying to say that masks don't work. Some even that masks makes things work worse by entrapping viral particles. Well, they do work. I mean, they're not a hundred percent. Maybe if if they said they didn't don't work a hundred percent, they're right. They don't. Maybe at best they're eighty percent, seventy percent. And so, you're not. You know, I'm I'm on a train tonight. And there's a guy up on the other end hacking and sneezing and coughing away, and I'm wearing a mask, and I'm thinking 70%. But then I'm going to get infected. I may not have any symptoms, and I'll get another boost to my immunity. Um, but I'll be infected, and if I'm positive in Switzerland, I can't come home. Anyway, trapping viral particles is not a problem. They trap water particles with the virus in them, then they will dry out in your mask and lose infectivity. So it's not an issue. A very popular YouTube channel dropped a video on, yeah, the brain. I know, the brain. They they dropped these videos that we've talked about years ago on TWIP, and they get a million and a half views, and we get 3,000 views on TWIP because they're that cutesy Gerskin act, or what is it? Kyrgyz act, yeah, with nice animations. It's great. They're beautifully animated and lots of nice music. And I don't have the resources to do that, and I don't want to make cutesy animated videos. <laughs> I want to sit here, me and other people, and talk to you. And I can have some good figures and do that, but I think that's the way to teach people. Um, let's see. I know that video because I 
subscribe to that channel and I see the stuff that drops and I look, you know, it dropped a day ago and it has a million and a half views. <laughs> I drop a twin and I get 500 views in a day. Uh, is there a relationship between viral and prion? They're two different things. A prion is a protein. A virus, as you know, is a complex assembly of nucleic acid and protein and sometimes lipid. So they're two different things. However, they can be both infectious. And they can, uh, prion doesn't replicate per se, but it causes other proteins to turn into it. So um, they're not viral at all. And I wouldn't say they're subviral either. No, I don't think that's correct. Nothing to do with viruses. Well, you can call them subviral if you want, but not around me. <laughs> I have received first two COVID and not the booster. Will the booster give me any significant protection? I think so. That's why I got a booster. I'm 69. And then I had to get it for my work. But I think it was worth it. I'm not getting a fourth shot. I don't see the data that say I need it. So I would get it, William. Our 98-year-old is getting her fourth COVID. So 98, probably it's not a bad idea because your immunity is probably drifting very low, even the memory cells, yeah. Can Paxlovid inhibit the natural immune response? All right, so you're supposed to get Paxlovid uh, at the first, you know, within 24 hours of symptoms. Otherwise, it's too late to catch the window where you're going to uh, inhibit replication. So the virus hasn't been reproducing for that long, although it has been reproducing, say, if it's Omicron, for three days, three or four days. So uh, nobody is. So you could imagine that it would tweak your immune system sufficiently, but nobody's studied that because Paxlovid has just come on the scene, right? But it would be an interesting study to look at uh, antibodies in people um, who have gotten cut Paxlova. The thing is you'd want people who are unvaccinated first infection to really get a good indication because then way you don't have the complication of memory. I, I don't know if someone's going to do that. Uh, what about long COVID? No, so he, the thing is if you're vaccinated and then you get infected, so there's a, there are reports that you can get long COVID, right? I don't know how long it goes out. It's, long COVID is anything beyond the two weeks where the the, the, the virus infection is, is ongoing, right? So months, six months, a year. But we're not talking about 10 years yet because we're not that far out. So we have no idea if any of these patients are going to resolve. And the real question is, what's the, what's the frequency of long COVID after an infection in a vaccinated person and how long does it last? And we do not know. And one of the problems is, Long COVID is not diagnosed by a diagnostic test yet. It's diagnosed by questionnaire. So this, there's, a little, there's quite a bit of inaccuracy in that. So I think the best estimates right now is 10% of vaccinated people who get infected develop long COVID, but recognize that we don't know how long that is. It may be different from the long COVID after infection of a non-vaccinated people. So I agree it's an issue. Um, but we don't know the answers. And so I think you're saying, but what about long COVID? And, you know, why am I not wearing a mask? I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not worried about long COVID. I am not. I've made my decision. The science, in my opinion, is not, does not worry me about long COVID. Would Paxlovid work on the common cold? Oh, so a common cold coronavirus. So... If I remember in the Paxlovid paper, and we did that on TWIV, uh, I think it inhibits replication of the common cold coronas. I don't know if it's as, as um, effective at inhibiting them. So, you know, the dose for um, SARS-CoV-2 may not do well against uh, some of the common cold coronas, but uh, it's possible, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the observation that S1 spike is still circulating in the blood weeks after injection? You mean after vaccination? Um, well, in 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 animal experiments now, tell me the human experiment where they have seen this. I'm not aware of it. 
Uh, I doubt that it's circulating in very high levels in the blood that are of any significance. Now, the thing about the immune system is antigens persist for a long period in lymph nodes for, for many, many months because that's how the immune system works, right? It needs that antigen there, that protein there to make better and better antibodies. So a little bit of protein will persist, but this is not a problem. This is the way the immune system works. Shingles vaccine is not needed if I never had chicken pox. If you, if you absolutely know you never had chicken pox, then you don't need a shingles vaccine. Uh, the problem is you may have gotten chicken pox and you didn't know it. So you cannot, I think you need to get, a, if you're of a certain age, you need to get a shingles vaccine. I'm triple Pfizer. This is a new a new word now. I'm triple Pfizer. It's good. I like that. Got a tetanus shot and a flu shot. Now my vaccinated arm feels crampy once in a while. It, it's not um it's not um I just saw your other <laughs> note. Let's see those Manolos. Um it may not be related to the vaccine. It may be something else. That's a problem with having things happen to you in in the neighborhood of being vaccinated. It may or may not be related. For sure, having all those vaccines in the same arm, they're inducing inflammation. So you have a little tissue damage. It may take some time to go away. So that may be why you feel crampy. It's not surprising. So some people get the shingles vaccine and have no side effects. Absolutely right. And some people the other way. Hey, folks, you know what? Everybody's different. This is maybe the one thing you should take away from this pandemic. When you see a study that says we gave these people the vaccine and this would happen, it may not happen to you because you're all different. You're all genetically diverse. Jingles. My two-year daughter had COVID. Do I still need to be careful until she can be vaccinated? Can she get the newer subvariants? Well, no. The subvariants are going to be okay if she got infected with BA2. She's protected for now. You should be careful because, as I said before, you don't know the extent of her um, immunity, right? So be careful. Absolutely. Ben Vincent has a bunch of sisters. I don't. No, actually, I have a brother. No sisters. Yep. <laughs> Tales from the Mouse House. Unfortunately, we're, we are reducing our mouse colony, right? We are sending some very expensive mice to Amy's new location. And uh, it... it <laughs> Interesting, they have to be re-derived. So here's what that means. So you, you should test your mice for certain pathogens, mouse pathogens, to make sure they don't have them because you don't want your mouse colony contaminated because it can affect your experiments, right? So every place that has mice, make sure they surveil their mice for certain pathogens, okay? So we sent a sample to the place where Amy is going. And they say, your mice are contaminated with this and that. We can't have them here. <laughs> we have to re-derive them, which means you take a pregnant female and you, when the, when the babies are ready to, to be born, you take them out by C-section and then you put them in a cage with a, with a clean mother that you know doesn't have the viruses that you're concerned about and, and it will raise those mice and... Uh, the the contaminated mom is gone, so that's called rederiving because you you take them out by C-section, you grow them up in a sterile in a pathogen-free environment. It's called. So that's that's this week's mouse story. It's cool, <laughs> very cool. I had herpes zoster infection of my larynx and my left vocal cord is paralyzed. Yes, you don't want to mess around with viruses for which you have vaccines. And even if these events are rare, you see right here in our population of 500 people, one person had a severe event after shingles and probably more. Chickenpox. 
Oh, you had socks there, yeah. Okay. Yes, have you shelled. It's not a treatment. It's a preventative monoclonal. That's right. It's given and ahead of time, and um, it lasts a long time in the blood. Absolutely right. Thank you. And I'm going to bring up Daniel's clinical update again uh, just uh, to show that. Uh, I want to show you what Daniel says about it. Let's turn on the screen share. Here we go. Passive vaccination, Evusheld. Intramuscular, two monoclonals for prevention of COVID. Prevention of COVID, that's right. A 90, 80% reduction in symptomatic COVID on top of what we're getting from vaccination. All right, and there's the article for it. Um, so patients who have moderate to severe immune compromise due to a medical condition or receipt of immunosuppressive medications and may not mount an adequate immune response to vaccination or other events. This is the people for whom Evusheld uh, is indicated. And yes, so not a treatment. It is a preventative. Thank you very much for pointing that out. And some, last Thursday, I got four vaccines at once. And honestly, a single dose of Pfizer was worse for side effects. And yeah, you're, I had very little side effects. Some people have many. It's just everybody's different. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, maybe in two weeks uh, when we come back, uh, Amy will have news, right? No Q&A next week. I'm going to be in Nebraska. You can blame the Nebraskans for inviting me. Puscast, it is P one S and one word, P U S C A S T. Infectious disease Puscast is a takeoff on Mark Chrislip, who used to have an infectious disease Puscast. Let's bring it up here to show you. Here we go. I don't want to go there because uh That'll open. Here we go. I'm going to share you this screen now. Screen share, producer. <laughs> Puscast. Um, the podcast was retired in 2021. It was called the Infectious Disease Puscast by an infectious disease doctor, uh, I believe, in Portland, Oregon, Mark Chrislip. So P U S C A S T. Um, some years ago, I called Mark and I said, how can Microbe TV help you continue? We'll help produce it. He said, no, I'm not interested. But you can take the name and run with it. So that's what Daniel and, and Sarah are doing. And hopefully I get it out tomorrow, the first episode. It's Daniel and Sarah, both infectious disease doctors, talking about infectious diseases of all kinds. Some viruses, not COVID, bacteria, and fungi, Rob, fungi. There you go. To I will submit it tomorrow to uh, to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, and but it'll be a web page. Have to do that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, John, for your contribution. I feel I felt an impulse to raise funds to get Amy the boots, but Twiv comes first. <laughs> Thank you. Well, she's gonna get a, a raise where she goes, so she can buy more expensive boots. Uh, she'll get a good raise. Yeah. Uh, can adjuvants increase reactogenicity? Yeah, of course they can, because here's the thing. When you get infected, you get inflammation. Inflammation is producing components of the immune response that are made to help clear the infection, but they, they hurt. Inflammation, the four signs of inflammation, redness, pain, swelling, and heat, rubor, dolor, calor, tumor. Those are the four classic signs of inflammation and they're caused by these components of the immune response that are turned on when you get infected. Well, when you get an adjuvant in a vaccine, that's what they're there for because inflammation actually makes for a better immune response. Inflammation is good for immune responses, but it's not good for your arm. It makes your arm hurt. So yet, and reactogenicity is the word we use for your sore arm after you get a vaccine with an adjuvant and the, and the fever and the malaise and so forth. Yeah. Uh, Winfield says during the debunking of a paper on debunk the funk, uh, a culture of resistance was mentioned. Yeah, cool. These guys like us. We'll have to have them on. Have to have them on. Um. 
How many days after COVID are symptoms considered long COVID? Yeah, well, that's a good question. So COVID should be a two-week illness. And so weeks, I would say weeks or months after um, you've cleared the infection, right? So according to the CDC, weeks or months after uh, you've cleared the infection, you still have symptoms. So weeks or months is long. So I mean, some people have a, some of those go away and some never do. So some people, the sense of smell returns and some do not. But so it's quite variable. And I think there are probably a number of different things going on. Have you had the shingles vaccine? Not yet. Uh, the last time I went, so I go every year for a physical and I'm going in the next few weeks and I, I will get it then because last time you didn't have it, I think. But hopefully we get it this time. I do want to get it. I'm 69. I need to get it. I had chicken pox as a kid for sure. I remember chicken pox. I totally remember chicken pox. I remember little else from my first 10 years of life. But getting chicken pox, I remember. Because I have a huge, I had a huge pox on my belly and there's still a scar from it. Isn't that something, how you remember that stuff? Um, has any of the new putts? No, it hasn't been. I just, I, I no, you, you, the, the comments come in. A stream. Um, I hope to get to it tomorrow. I had a slew of pods to uh, edit in the past week. And um, tomorrow is slated for podcast. But, you know, the problem is I have a lot of work to do in the incubator to make it ready for our opening. And I'm starting to get worried that I won't have time to do it. But I'm going to try and get podcasts out tomorrow. I'll prioritize it. Yeah. Topo seems to discredit the fact that the mRNA vaccine will also prime T cells. Of course it does. It's been shown by many studies that uh, mRNA vac vaccination induces uh, spike-specific T cells and memory spike-specific T cells that uh, last. Uh, that's ridiculous. So it shows, come on, folks, don't listen to Topo. Throw him off your Twitter feed. Follow me, P-R-O-F-E-R-R. And I can hear much from me because I just release episodes. I used to make comments and then people said I was unsophisticated. So if you think someone who has 40 years of virology experience is unsophisticated, pff, don't, don't follow. I'm sorry. I caught chicken pox when I was 38. I'm 55. Should I get a shingles vaccine or could I wait a few more years? <laughs> no, you should get one. You're in the age range now where it can reactivate. You should get it. Not so bad. Just get it on a Friday, okay? So if you don't work on a Saturday. Uh, I took Paxlovid a month ago. I'm experiencing extreme fatigue. Is there room to believe a second course will, would help? I, I don't know that that's being done. Daniel said they don't, you know, the people with the, re, with the rebound, as it's being called, are not getting a uh, second course. So... Uh, I'm not sure that that would help. Now, if you think you have long COVID and you're asking if Paxlovid would help that, that's that's an interesting question. We don't know the answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> the most important thing you missed is there's no Q and A next week. Yeah, I'll be on an airplane. It seems in Canada we can't get Paxlovid. Unless you're immune compromised, 65 and over, et cetera, et cetera. That's too bad because here in the U.S., many, pretty much anyone can get it. Well, of course, it depends. Um, it depends where you are, I suppose. What if you take a cyclovir at the prodromal phase? What do you mean? Uh, it will. Well, valcyclovir is the preferred what, derivative now. Um, it's very effective at preventing progression of the infection yeah so many people are getting infected twice yeah that's the way it's going to be infected no symptoms or mild symptoms that's um the way it's going to be can paxlovid uh, make symptoms worse by inhibiting natural immune response i don't think it would make the symptoms worse whether or not it inhibits your 
Uh, immunity is a good question, which I addressed before. Okay, everybody has a donation button. That's good. Uh, let's see. <sighs> is it true that certain statins affect Paxlovid? I don't know the answer to that. It's a good question. I don't know. Thank you, Pamela, for your contribution. Appreciate it. Thank you, Marge, for your contribution. Yeah, you, you have a button. Everybody has a pay button. Most people do. Dr. Griffin is a nice guy. He listens to all viewpoints and kindly explains the data. Yeah, he is very considerate. He's more considerate than I am in many cases because sometimes I get ticked off. And, you know, I'm on a show with him and I often say, hey, what's with that? And he's very nice. He laughs and he says, okay, Vincent, I agree. Or Very rarely he says I disagree or he just says what the data are. Yeah, he's a good model. He's a good model. What about Daniel's update next week? Yeah, Daniel's update will happen. It will be Thursday, and I'm always here to record his update. And I actually have, have a backup. I can't get someone to do the live stream, right, because I'm running the stream. I offered it to Amy, and as you see, she didn't like that. <laughs> so, But if I'm not here for Puscast or Daniel's update, I can get someone else to record. That's no problem. David, who may be listening tonight. Thank you, David, for doing that. Thank you, Environmental, for your contribution. I, I'm really grateful. Thank you. Signs of long COVID. Well, there are many, and they are just... The cardinal thing is that you have signs and symptoms that persist beyond the original acute phase of COVID, and they can include... Um, uh, loss of smell and taste. They can include brain fog. They can include respiratory, cardiac, gastrointestinal, sim uh, skin symptoms, a whole variety of them. And they're all covered in the questionnaires that they give you. The virus wants to sabotage the incubator. Yes, it, w it would seem so. And yes, Pamela, Bill Gates is not a virologist, but he's talking about, it's, so the cardiologist is not a virologist. I don't get why all these people think they know answers or they can predict. Uh, will Virology Live remain available on YouTube? Yes. Uh, yes, they are going to be there. And it will be uh, in the fall. I'm going to teach a viruses live course. about. It's a live stream about viruses, right? Influenza, coronaviruses, herpes. I'll see how many I can fit in, <laughs> right? It could go for a while. And that's a lot of work to prepare that, but I want to do it. And this is my strategy, to keep putting content out there, to flood YouTube with content. Well, not flood because, um, you know, a one-person show. But a lot of content eventually get more and more noticed and people will r r realize where to go. Not to cardiologists or Bill Gates. You can go to Bill Gates for your money. That's great. I think he can support a lot of good programs. But you shouldn't. You shouldn't uh, talk about science. You should stick to Windows 95 tech support. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, we're, we're talking about Bill Gates now. I am late to the party. When do you fly to Switzerland? All right, so, so I'm flying to Zurich on Saturday the... Um, I have to get my calendar up here. Uh, Saturday the 14th. I get there on Sunday, and then I visit Monday. And Tuesday the 17th, I leave. Quick turnaround. I'm giving the Richard Ernst lecture. I want to show you this. Let's let's call it up. I'm pretty pumped to be doing this. Um, okay, so here, let me sh share the screen. Well, we're going to turn that off. Screen share. So the Richard Ernst lecture is uh, sponsored by the ETH Zurich. And this is um, a lecture after Richard Ernst, who won the 
1991 Chemistry Nobel Prize, and he just died a few years ago, but they had established this lecture in his name. So this year, it's me. An inordinate fondness for viruses is the name of the lecture. Yeah, that's me. And um, it's it's open to the public, right? Here's the program. It starts at, the doors open at 3.30 and then 4 p.m. I'm going to get the medal and then uh, my lecture. And then after, we're going to have a panel discussion about, I mean, this this whole thing, this whole award is about the interface between science and the public. So all these people are going to be on the panel with me, including a, a lady who is science editor at Swiss Public Radio. Uh, and, and, you know, some very interesting people have received this award. The last uh, recipient uh, was Emmanuel Charpentier, right, who just got the Nobel Prize for CRISPR, gene editing with CRISPR. And uh, previously... 2017. Uh, this is this lady is a uh, phys particle physicist, uh, and then there's one person I want to get to. 2015. Um, this is Steve Chu, right? Physics Nobel laureate, uh, Secretary of Energy in the U.S. It's a damn good crowd of people. I don't really belong in this crowd. Now that's Steve uh, again. Now. Um, this is uh, another one. Um, the one I'm trying to show you, 2013, I think. Yeah, no, that's not him. 2012. Nope. Sorry, folks. 2011. Nope. Must have been 2010. Kofi Annan. <laughs> there you go. He got it one year. So, pretty cool. I'm in uh, August Company. And, you know, you got to go to Europe to get appreciated. <laughs> for doing science communication, not here in the U.S. I don't give a damn, except you guys. You guys give a damn. So that's when I... Thank you, Jane. You you triggered that little digression. That's when I'm going to Switzerland. If you're in Zurich, come by and come up and say hello. Thank you, Doreen, for your contribution. We often channel racinisms, racinellisms, including we have make vaccines that work and they made their choice. Yes. Thank you so much for your contribution. Okay. Not to defend other things Gates has said, but he said in an interview yesterday that COVID clearly originated in bats and dismissed the lab leak. Okay. Thank you, John. It's important to point out, what do you do when somebody is vocal? and has He's got a platform, obviously, right? What do you do when someone has that and they say mixed things? I don't know. I guess I say sometimes say mixed things, right? So you could argue the same about everybody. I try not to say the wrong things. Okay, we should. Have you got your 100K? No, I'm not going to be getting it. Um, so months ago when we hit the 100K, a notice popped up on YouTube. It said, click here to get your thing. So I clicked, and nothing happened, and it never came back again. And I never asked anyone. I don't have time to chase it down. I wish I could, but I don't know who to ask. YouTube is a black box of, you know, you can't reach a human on YouTube. Okay, we have an expert on ventilations. Uh, okay, send me his name or her name, Vincent at microbe.tv. And um, what else we have here? Press the like button. Five hundred views is more than I get. I'm very lucky to have uh, five hundred people here. I'm not complaining. The reason I do complain, Jordy, is that I think it's an important message. It's about health. It's not entertainment. There are lots of great things on YouTube, and I, it's amazing, the stuff that's there, the people who have amazing crafts and abilities, and they get more, way more views than me. I mean, I watch this rest restorationist, a painter restorer, who's amazing. He gets millions of views. It's great. I think he deserves it because his work is amazing. But I think... I want I want to educate people about science so they can understand health decisions, and uh, that's why I want more people watching. I feel sad that people are missing the message. I mean, you guys are smart enough to be here, but look, 
we used to get 12, over a thousand people and those people have gone because they don't think it's relevant anymore. But this is a lifelong journey. It's what Les told me once. I'm a lifelong learner now. And that's what you need to be. It's not hard. You guys are sitting here, you're sipping and you're, you know, you're, you're listening and you're typing comments. It's not that hard and you're absorbing. Come on. <laughs> My neighbor got unvaccinated, got COVID the same time. She had less symptoms. You're two different people, Sundari. That's the bottom line. Everybody's genetically different, and you're going to react differently to infectious diseases. No, blood type in this case doesn't determine the severity of COVID. That was discounted some time ago. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for saying I look great for my age. 69, yeah. I'm not doing bad. Yeah. I'm lucky. I've got good genes. Good Southern Italian jeans. <laughs> Thank you, Ian, for your contribution. Uh, and the, um, what's the name of that machine that you gave me? I've forgotten its name now, but it's still boxed up because I'm going to do an unboxing for you, and, and I don't have time right now to do it, but it's in a corner, hidden away. Veterinarians probably see the first outbreaks of zoonotic diseases. Who, who interfaces with those? Well, we do. I know many, many veterinary virologists. And, of course, they interface with public health people as well. But the virology veterinary community is very tight. We have them at our meetings as well. Our friend got tested to board a flight from Warsaw to Chicago. You, he tested negative. You will be fine too. Yeah, but what if I'm not? That it throws a wrench in the works. You know, it's called anxiety. We all have it. Even though I look young, I still have anxiety. Uh, but you can be anxious at any age. I hope I will be fine. I just, uh, I'm going to arrange to have a, a local test on Monday in Zurich. So that's fine. I was told I didn't need a chickenpox vaccine pre-nursing school because my blood work showed evidence of previous infection. Oh, I see. No, you're not talking about shingles vaccine. My mom and I were so surprised we never knew I had chickenpox. So all the people who said I never had chickenpox. There you go. Thank you, March 716. You just proved my point. You can have chickenpox but not know it. Would wearing a mask to prevent the spread of other diseases be worth it? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. In many countries, people wear masks in uh, respiratory virus seasons. Certain respiratory diseases are seasonal, and that is a great way to prevent infection. Influenza, common colds, SARS-CoV-2 going forward, right? You can choose to wear a mask in winters, I think. Um, the, you know, the reason COVID is a little unusual is because now we, we have off-season peaks because we're not quite at the level of population immunity to restrict the bigger uh, epidemics to the winter. But at some point we're going to get there. I don't know what, how many years it's going to be. Uh, and then you can do your masking in the winter. But also for other infections, you can figure out when their um, peaks are. Now, some infections, of course, won't be impacted by a mask. So neurovirus will not because you ingest it. You have to take your mask off to eat. And, you, uh, of course, if you wore a mask all the time and you didn't eat, then you wouldn't get foodborne diseases. So, But you can't do that. You need to have nourishment. Let's see, what else do we have here in the, do I need a shingles vaccine if I had shingles itself over 30 years ago? Yeah, I am I had shingles in, uh, you know, the first year um, of TWIV, I had shingles, and I'm, st I'm still getting a shingles vaccine. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, Chris Lip was very funny. Um <laughs> Uh, D Daniel is not Chris Lip. They're two different people. I think Daniel and Sarah are amusing, and their their chemistry is going to evolve as they go on. It's a good crew. Uh, no, no TWIV at midnight, so I'm canceling TWIV on Friday because I have to do work at the incubator. 
unless someone wants to come and help me install shelves, uh, I got to screw the brackets into the wall. And there are three rows of six. Sh- it's a lot of shelving to do, and then I have to do, hang pictures. I have to finish the soundproofing and throw out. I got to cancel TWIV on Friday, so I'm going to post this re- week's Tuesday recording on Sunday. Sorry about that. And so we're not going to have TWIV this week until Sunday. We'll have Saturday Daniel's TWIV. We'll have the regular TWIV on Sunday. Then next week we'll have um, Daniel's TWIV on Thursday. TWIV 900 is going to be recorded next Thursday as well, and that will be released on the weekend. Can you believe it? We're up to 900 episodes. Thank you, Morris, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm going to get Dan on. I'm going to do that. I've been wanting to do that a year. I think we should do more cross crossovers on our science programs. And um, I, I would like to lead in that because it rarely happens. Everybody who gets their... Uh, success in shows they want to keep it to themselves if a triple vaccinated individual recently caught BA2 is there any chance they can still get COVID again with the next 60 days I can't give you a chance but I think it's it's highly unlikely because I think every time you get infected you're getting a little boost and that is going to be what's happening right we're going to have boosts with milder and milder infections in every year so we're not going to need boosters Infection is going to give us that boost. I need a delegation tool. I need some assistance. So Hannah is our intern, and shes I can give her things to do, and she's great. Um, so I, I will use her more and more. But, you know, you need a list of things. So I'm now writing a newsletter. I want to send out a monthly newsletter to, to people who are listeners, supporters, fans, telling us what's up. And so I started to work on the first one. And I gave her something to do on that. So I can, I just the thing is that stuff, more and more stuff is needed to be done. I mean, I was thinking this morning, starting Microbe TV 501c3 is great, makes us able to raise money, but it brings on a lot more work. There's a lot of things I should be doing and I haven't. This is good. This is what Daniel says. Vac- oh, that maybe that's what Condit said or somebody else said. Vaccines are like fire extinguishers. They help you put fires out. They don't prevent fires. That's right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, you, there you go. You can not take Simvastatin and Paxlovid. There are drug interactions out there, interaction checkers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frank. Good night. Thanks. Frank is one of our moderators. Thank you very much. We're almost at the bottom here. I'd like to get to the bottom. I'll stay a few more minutes. Um, Any virologist info about China? No. What's with the strict lockdowns? I think it's simply that they don't want spreading and they don't want to make everyone get vaccinated. This is consistently the nicest live chat on YouTube. Thanks, mods and audience. Mods are really good at keeping it civil here. And frankly, the ones who are now staying are the ones who are interested. And the ones who were here before weren't so interested. Here's an explanation of Paxlovid from Les. Yes, ritonavir, to, uh, is, which is an uh, inhibitor of uh, c- cytochrome P450. Ritonavir was originally developed as an antiviral for HIV. And it was not great, but it was found to inhibit P450 and increase the potency of other drugs because they don't get degraded by P450. And for some drugs, you want them degraded because that's how they were tested, right? So you don't want an inhibitor of P450. (laughs) not sure. I don't have imposter syndrome when it comes to podcasts. I think we make a good product. But um, awards like that where other people have gotten it who are clearly, I mean, Nobel laureates, 
it's a different it's a different uh crowd and i i'm really appreciative that they decided to do i think it's very smart of them to pick a science communicator because it just we don't get honored here in the u.s i mean carl zimmer and bill nye and their ilk get honored but they're not working scientists stiffs who are trying to do science communication right that's their job blue eddy yes the blue eddy and so um i appreciate that they that they did it for me i just feel nobel laureate is kind of lofty youtube has a creator ella Bigi, blah, blah 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 okay thank you elizabeth i wish i could just say to my personal assistant, can you take care of this? <laughs> YouTube creator uh, eligibility page. But thank you for checking. It's something I just wasn't going to deal with. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nice, nice people here. What are you doing in Nebraska? Uh, I'm at the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha giving a seminar on, um, what is it, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Um, on mostly, you know, the work we've done over the years on enteroviruses and childhood paralysis. You have 130,000 followers on Twitter. Twitter is awful, but I think if you tweeted more and tweeted in response to misinformation, more would come to you twiv on YouTube. Yeah, I should get someone to do it for me because I just don't have the bandwidth to do it. You're absolutely right. But I do spend so much time preparing shows and editing them. Maybe if I could relieve myself of the editing chores, it would be, it would be good. Shingles is two doses. That's correct. Uh, no, never got invited by People's Pharmacy. All right, folks, that's uh, the end. Can you believe it? I reached the end. Thank you, Ali, for your contribution. Holy crap, I reached the end of the, of the questions and I pretty much, Amy and I got through through most of them. So I want to thank uh, the moderators tonight, Les, Steph, Frank, and um, Les, Steph, Frank. Who am I missing? Vanity, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming uh, consistently and, and taking care of the civility here. We really appreciate it. Thanks to all of you for coming with your great questions. Giving you a week off next week. It's probably a good thing to take a break. Uh, but in two weeks, we'll be back. We'll post the um, the live stream notice. Meanwhile, be safe. If you are in my areas of travel, come see me. Come see me. <laughs> And say hello. I like this overjoyed. She goes, I didn't realize you can have asymptomatic chicken pox. Sorry, caps lock. Yeah, see, we, I speculated and we learned something. It's a great community for learning. All right, folks, take care. See you next time. Good night.